All right. I thought I'd try something new on my show, and this is a new segment that I'm starting called Spatry's Inbox. This is where I'm going to answer your questions that you have given me in my suggestion box. And that is going to begin right now on Spatry's Cup of Linux. Okay, let's begin. To get your question answered on this show, simply click the coffee cup that you see on the screen, okay? And that will take you to my channel. And uh, this is where you can uh, drop me a coin or two. Hey, 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 I can always use some support. And then you can scroll down here to where it says requests here only. Click on Spatry's suggestion box, okay? And then in there, leave a comment in that section or question and I will read it and uh, and then when it comes time to clean out my suggestion box I'll put up a video where I answer everybody's questions and that sort of thing. Now I'm obviously not going to be able to get to all of them but I'll try my best. Okay let's go ahead and go on to our first question. This first question comes from Andy Keys and he wanted to know how did I get my cup of Linux mug inside the Compiz cube? Let me show you this. Okay, so when I middle click my mouse, all right, you'll see that I have my cup of Linux mug inside of here. All right, well, let me show you how to do this trick. It's really easy to do. Okay, first, you're going to need to go into the Compiz config settings manager. All right, and you're going to scroll down to where you see cube 3D models. Now, you're going to need to go online to download an OBJ file because that is the only file that this will accept. Or you can take Blender and you can convert any models that you make in Blender and then you can export them as OBJ files. You will press New here and a dialog will open. Okay, I'm going to just go ahead and edit this one. Well, let me delete this here. I'm just going to edit this one so you can see what the filled out form looks like. Okay, basically it points to where I have my a couple Linux mug object file here. The scale factor determines how large or how small your model is going to be. Okay, and it takes a little while to tweak these settings to get the look you're after. So I'm not going to be moving any of these sliders because I'm happy with the way my object looks. Okay, your X and Y determine its position. Okay, and then the Z determines its depth or where it is in 3D space within that cube. Okay, all right, you can select the rotation pane and then by adjusting this slider, you can make your object rotate inside. Also, if you have a model that already has animation, you can have it run as still animated or animation playing in reverse. How cool is that? All right, and then of course you can specify how many frames per second that animation is running. I hope that helps you out, Andy. All right, the next one comes from Dolphin Toad, and he asks, Hey, mate, seems to me a lot of folk could use some good advice for speeding up or lightening up their Ubuntu and Ubuntu-based systems. You did a great video about uh, using Jupyter for power saving. Thank you. And I wondered if you could at some point cover the benefits of reducing swappiness on Ubuntu and its derivatives. Cheers. Okay, well, I'm no expert at swap and memory and that sort of thing. But I can tell you that to have an effective Linux system, you're going to want to have, or at least what they recommend is to have the same amount of swap space as the amount of memory you have installed on your system. So, if you have 2 gigs of memory installed on your machine, you're probably going to want 2 gigs of memory uh, for swap and not any more than that because it could probably cause performance issues for you. Okay, another thing that you can do is you can uh, go into your session and startup manager here and this can help you uh, with speeding up your system. Now, for instance, if you're using a desktop that has compositing, like Compiz that you see me using here, well, that hogs up a lot of resources. So if you want to get that extra punch, you might want to shut those extra special effects off. 
Additionally, you may want to shut off resources that are starting up automatically when the system boots. For instance, I have a few things that uh, I shut off. I'm not using Bluetooth. really don't need it. Um, I'm not using a Clipman. I have a few things here that I could actually shut off as well. So you can see I don't have everything that is set up by default uh, loaded on here. So that can help you get that extra bit of punch. And of course, if you want to even get more punch, Try using a lighter weight desktop. Some of the lightest ones that are out there are XFCE, LMDE, and of course Enlightenment is also a very lightweight desktop that you can try. I hope that answers your question for you. All right, here's another one from Snake2006, and he asks me, I got one. I'm having trouble with Linux Lite. Say I want to download the newest dev file of VLC since it is... Uh, 2.10 and the one in Linux Lite is 2.08. Every time I click on the download for Ubuntu on their website, uh, Firefox tells me I need to launch an application to open that file. I have GW Package Manager installed in the system, so how do I tell Firefox for those app links to use GW to install it? Same goes for torrents with magnet links. I have Deluge on my system. Okay, well, when that file dog dialog pops up, collect Click the Open With button, okay? And then navigate to your bin directory. That is slash bin. That's where most of your system executable files are located. So, for instance, let's say you want to uh, open up that BitTorrent with, uh, with Deluge. Well, it's in here, okay? And... Uh, here it is. It's deluge slash GTK. You s select and point to that file, and then Firefox will use that to open it. The same goes for the GW package installer. Alternatively, you can right-click on the file and select Save As. That's usually what I like to do when I was downloading dev packages. I want to save them so I can archive them and have them for later use if necessary. So you can save it to your hard drive and then double-click it, GW will pick it up. I hope that answers your question for you. Yeah, because uh, I don't have Firefox installed, I use Chromium now. <laughs> right, this one comes from Morbuenas Thales. Good afternoon to you too, buddy. Hi, Spatry. Could you do a video on how to partition while installing Solid XK? It's the only thing stopping me from actually installing the whole thing. Yes, I do know the Debian-based installers can be kind of tricky for some newcomers. So, let me show you how to do that. Now, uh, in VirtualBox here, I actually, uh, since I just did a review on Sparky Linux, which is Debian-based, it has the same exact installer. Follow along with what I'm doing here. Okay, you will get a dialog that says, we need to prepare a swap and install partition now. Gparted will allow you to create the new partitions. You must create or have one install partition and one swap partition. If you already have partitions, setup will just then just quit Gparted and the installation will continue. Okay, let's press OK. Let me show you what they're talking about here. Okay, first, you're going to select your hard drive, all right? And I have a 20 gig hard drive for today's example, all right? And then Gparted opens up. All right, I don't have anything on here. Now, let's say you have a Windows partition. Okay, you would resize that partition down and then you would allocate uh, some partitions for Linux. But in this case, we're just going to use a blank hard drive for you. We're going to go into device, and we're going to select create a partition table. It's going to give you a warning. Press apply. Okay. Now that you have a partition table, we're going to create a new partition by selecting partition and then new partition. I'm going to select ext4, since that is the newest, latest, and greatest ext. And I'm going to slide this down. Okay, my computer has about 4 gigs of RAM. Well, you know what? I suppose that's close enough, just a little shy of 4 gigs. And the rest will be allocated to the file system. So I'm going to select Add. And now I'm going to select this one, right-click on it, select New. Okay, I'm going to call this uh, a primary partition, and then this is going to be set as Linux Swap. I'm going to select Add and then apply, okay? 
These operations will then apply, and once that dialog is finished, we'll proceed to the next step. After that's completed, I like to right-click on the ext4 partition, select Manage Flags, okay, and then designate that as boot. Although the installer may actually do that for you, but I like to uh, cross my I's and dot my T's, uh, scratch that and reverse it. Okay, once you close Gparted, the installer picks right back up. And now it's detected that we made a swap partition. So it's going to turn that swap on now so that the installer can use it. And then it's detected the partition, okay, that we want to use for the file system. So we're going to press OK on that one as well after selecting it, okay. And we're going to select where to install the root partition to, okay. We're going to select a format it as the XT4, even though we already did that. We're going to put home in the root partition, okay? And then you're ready to give it all the information that's necessary to complete the install. I hope that answered your question for you. The Daver wanted to know, how can you, uh, can you show me how to change the color on Kdenlive's Live's user interface? Absolutely. This is really easy. Okay, so let's go to Kden Live here. All right, and then you're going to go into settings here. You're going to go into themes and look at all these themes you can choose from. So if you want oxygen, you can have that <coughs> color. <laughs> or uh, any other KDE themes that you have, you can actually uh, select that. So pretty easy. So uh, now um, you may need to get KDE system settings installed to tweak these colors individually, but uh, there should already be some themes pre-installed that you can select from the selector. If not, check your repositories for some KDE themes that you can download. Jeff Turner wanted to know, can you do a tutorial on how to theme the heck out of 7OS Neptune? Well, guess what? Zevin OS uses XFCE as its default desktop. And the good news is I have tutorials galore on tweaking it. So let's go ahead and go to my channel here. And in my channel, if you scroll down to where it says playlists here, just click on the word playlists. All right. And in here is the Linux Mint 13 XFCE Bootcamp. I cover everything you want to know about theming XFCE right in here. But let's say you decided to opt for the Mate desktop environment, MDE. Okay, well, uh, you could actually follow the instructions in my Pinguy OS how-to series on theming that. Uh, those are the desktops that I've used the most in terms of theming. So uh, just by going through some of these playlists that I have on here, you'll see some really cool tricks for getting the best out of theming your desktop. OS Dolphin wanted to know, Hey Spat, can you show me how to make a coffee coaster out of uh, Brazero? Well, number one, I am not going to download the software because, well, uh, I don't want all those de uh, dependencies and all that stuff installed on it. But when I say that a program makes coffee coasters, uh, Brazero seems like, you know, anytime I've tried to make a bootable DVD, uh, many times, not all the time, but many times uh, I would create disks that d just would not work or would not boot for me, even though I checked the MD5 sums on those images before burning. So I've now, I don't know if there has been any changes or any improvements because I just tend to stick with what I know and what I like. I happen to like XF Burn and K3B as the best, best disk burners uh, for Linux that are out there today. So, unfortunately, I can't show you how to do that because, uh, yeah, uh, I really don't want to waste my good disks. <laughs> and then we had another request from my buddy, uh, uh, ben, who wanted me to build, uh, to build, uh, some desktops on top of, uh, the Gentoo install that I did. And sadly, Ben, you have installed Gentoo more times than most people change their underwear in a week. Okay. Um, so maybe you should come over here, sit in front of this green screen, put on the wig, 
and the makeup and uh, do the install tutorial because uh, that was a nightmare installing Gen 2 and I can't do it again. Ah! All right. Well, that's all I have for Spatry's Inbox. Thank you all for watching, and as a reminder, please uh, consider helping the show hosts you love the most by disabling your ad blockers. Peace out. Music.